the night fairy we're on chapter six trapped and if you look at this hopefully you'll be able to see this can you see that the little uh thumbnail shows somebody jumping it looks like running hands up hands up jumping we're going to find out what this is chapter six trapped with an exclamation point Midsummer came, a season of blinding hot days and even thunderstorms. Flory disliked the heat of the sun, but she enjoyed the storms, especially when they came at night. She liked to think of the bats getting wet. Oh, you're not getting less spiky, Flory. You're getting spikier if you're thinking about that kind of stuff. Enjoying because somebody's getting wet, uncomfortable. No, you should just enjoy the thunderstorms. Flory was growing up. She was as tall as two acorns now. Let me see. That would be about the size, maybe. Well, actually, let me show you something. This is about the size of an acorn, right? Let me see if it's like this. So two acorns, two acorns. She was as tall as two acorns now, and her curls brushed her shoulders. She could climb as nimbly as an insect and leap from twig to twig as recklessly as Scuggle himself. Her little house was full of things that she had made. Oh, let's listen to what she's made because this is really delicious. Okay. She's got a lily leaf hammock, a quilt of woven grass, and a score of airy gowns, airy gowns, crafted from poppies and rose petals. She had saved, she had food saved for the winter, a mound of sunflower seeds, and three snapdragon flowers stuffed with pollen. Oh, snapdragon flowers would make the best um, pollen holders because they kind of have like that little piece like that. And then they, they, yeah, they're kind of like baskets all alone. But the other thing is when she said that about, I mean, when the author told us about the airy gowns crafted from poppies and rose petals, during this coronavirus thing, some of the children that used to go to the school, they're twins, they, well, did they both work on flowers? But any, uh, dresses, they were making dresses out of, not for themselves, but for uh, figures, out of poppy, out of uh, blossoms. I think that dogwood blossoms would make good dresses, and probably so would magnolia blossoms. Those would make the best ones. Okay, so... She spent a week harvesting cherries, hacking them apart with her dagger, cutting out the pits, and drying them with a magic spell. Every day she learned new spells. They came into her head like songs. We know people that can do that, make up songs like that, and their spells. That would be so good. She was half asleep beside the hummingbird feeder one afternoon when she heard a blue jay squawking. At first she ignored him because she knew how much blue jays enjoy making noise. But see, they don't enjoy making noise. They make the noise because there's something going on in the garden. They like to take a scrap of song or piece of news and repeat it over and over. Yeah, they do do that. Just for the thrill of screaming. But though they shriek for the fun of it, they often tell the truth about what is going on. And this blue jay was shrieking hummingbird and spiderweb and trapped. Uh-oh, we just found out who the trapped is. It's a hummingbird trapped in a spider web. Flory sat bolt upright. She peered around the garden without seeing either the hummingbird or the spider web, and she opened her mouth to shout for Scuggle and then shut it. Scuggle had been known to eat baby birds. If the hummingbird was caught in a spider web, Scuggle might eat him. An idea took shape in her mind. She shut her eyes and pressed the palms of her hands against her eyelids. She half hissed, half prayed, to see the hummingbird. It was a new magic, one she had never tried. At first she saw only the reddish glow of her inner eyelids, and then she saw the spider web. It belonged to the black and yellow spider that patrolled the juniper bush by the side gate. The sticky threads had snared the hummingbird's wings. The more the bird struggled, the more it was held fast. I'll come, Flory said breathlessly. Don't be afraid, hummingbird. I'll save you. She looked down, saw a twig below her, and leaped for it. Once she caught hold, she looked down, she looked below for another. 
It was a haphazard, dangerous way to get to the ground, but she had no time to waste. She flung herself from twig to twig until she reached the bottom branch, and then she shinnied down the trunk. Blades of grass rustled like corn stalks over her head. Oh, the corn, the grass is up above her head. Like when you're running through a cornfield, if you've ever done that, uh, you can see the tops. You can only see the sky through. Flory wished she had thought to bring her dagger so that she could cut her way through the grass, through the tangles. The idea crossed her mind that she had no idea how she was going to save the bird. Still, she had her magic and her mind was made up. It would have to be enough. She thrashed through the grass, breaking into a run when she came to the open space of the patio. By the time she reached the side gate, she was out of breath. She saw the spider web above her, a great silver network covering, hold on a second, covering most of the juniper bush. The trap bird was less than a foot from the ground. Can I show you something? This is Flory mm, running across the patio. And you see the legs of that table or the chair, they're really fancy. They look like um, animal legs that are made from leaves, like wrought iron. I actually have a table like that, but it's inside my house. It looks exactly like that. But if you think about how long a person that's the size of two acorns, it would take them to run across even one brick. It's like she is running as fast as she can. Wait, I can't, there we go. And she's running as fast as you can. If you imagine like a sidewalk, and if there was somebody this tall running across the sidewalk, it would take a while for that person to get across the sidewalk. Flory is determined to get to that hummingbird. I'm coming, shouted Flory. Don't be frightened. I'm coming to save you, hummingbird. Once the words were out, she clapped her hand over her mouth. Web-building spiders do not stray far from their webs. The spider must be close at hand, but by a stroke of good luck, the spider was nowhere to be seen. Perhaps she was busy with other prey. All the same, she might return at any moment. Flory jumped straight up into the air, catching the bottom branch of the juniper bush. She swung back and forth until she hooked her legs over a branch. I've come to set you free, she said breathlessly. I'm going to pull the web off you, only you must promise me something first. I really feel like if you were going to rescue something that needed rescuing, you would do it just for the sake of rescuing that thing that needed rescued. She, Flory is doing something that, I just don't know about that. I, Flory is saying, I will rescue you, but you have to promise something first. That's like, I'll do this for you, but you need to pay me before I do it. Or I'll save you, but you have to tell me, you have to give me something to save you. And here you are trapped. I mean, like, what are you going to do? Okay. The hummingbird twisted its head to look at her. The feathers under its chin were pearly white. It was a female. She thought it was the male. I think she was hoping that it was the male. I've seen you, said Flory. You come to the water feeder. I've never seen you, said the hummingbird. She craned her neck for another look. Why are you awake? You're a night fairy. She's trapped. She can't really talk like that. Flory says. I used to be a night fairy, Flory said. Now I'm not. Will you promise? Promise? Asked the hummingbird. Yes, said Flory. She felt her cheeks grow warm. She was not often ashamed, but she felt a little awkward about what she was going to say. So Flory knows that it's wrong. She took a deep breath and spoke very clearly so that she wouldn't have to say it twice because it's going to feel bad to say it once. I'll set you free, but after I set you free, you must be my very own hummingbird and let me ride on your back. She waited for the hummingbird to agree, but the hummingbird was still. The glittering wings were motionless. When they didn't catch the light, they were plain gray. Flory gave a nervous little laugh. It's like this. Here you go. <laughs> no, said the hummingbird. No, echoed Flory. No, said the hummingbird. I won't belong to you. I belong to myself, and I have eggs. A note of pride came into her voice. If I get free... I shall have to look after my nestlings. I shan't have time to bother with you. 
When Flory saves this hummingbird, she will also save the hummingbird's eggs. If she decides not to save the hummingbird because the hummingbird says, I will not belong to you, then Flory will hurt not just that hummingbird, but also the hummingbird's eggs. Flory could not think what to do to say next. She reached upward, pulling herself closer to the bird. But I want to cut you free, she said. I'd like to. If you don't get free, you'll die. The hummingbird's throat, throat, the hummingbird's throat moved. Her beak was open. She was panting for breath. If I die, the eggs will die, she said hoarsely. Night will fall and it will be cold and the chicks will die inside their shells. Flory felt a funny ache in her throat. She was not the kind of fairy who cried easily and she didn't think the hummingbird cried at all, but the words the chicks will die made her feel queer as if her heart was, were swollen and sore. She gave herself a little shake, trying to replace the queer feeling with crossness. It's your own fault, she said. I'm perfectly willing to set you free. All you have to do is promise to be mine. Then you can warm the eggs and the chicks won't die. Now, it just so happens that when you're doing something that doesn't feel right, it can come out of you in two different ways. So it could come out of you in sorrow, which you could fix, or it could come out of you in anger, which you can also fix. The way you fix it is by doing the thing you know is right. Right now, it's this feeling is coming out of Flory, not in sorrow, but it's coming out in anger. She needs to fix it. How she fixes it is to do the right thing. Let's see if Flory does it. I can't promise, said the hummingbird. Why not, demanded Flory. She has to fix it. Because I can't lie. Hummingbirds don't. Flory inched closer. I couldn't make... I couldn't make you serve me all, I mean, I'm sorry. Flory inched closer. I wouldn't make you serve me all the time, she coaxed. Please, only sometimes I want to ride on your back. It doesn't matter what you want, said the hummingbird in her low, scratchy voice. I can't think about that. My eggs are growing cold. All she's thinking is about her eggs. And she can't lie. Flory glowered at the hummingbird. All at once, she wanted to burst into tears. So she's gone from anger to angry tears, really. She's still not at sorrow. She wanted to stamp her feet and shout and kick. She realized that she was going to free the hummingbird and get nothing in return. Hold still, she said furiously. I'm going to set you free. You don't deserve it, but I'm going to help. Flory's doing this other thing where she's turning her anger not just holding it, but turning it outward. And even though she's going to set her free, she's doing it mm, in a really unpleasant way. Flory, Flory, Flory. She yanked one of the strands in the web. That's going to hurt the bird. Hmm? But the web would not break. Instead, it stretched. And when Flory tried to jerk away, the sticky silk glued itself to her forearm. You'll get yourself caught, said the hummingbird. Flory could see that this was a real danger. All the same, she wasn't going to give up. She thought for a moment, I could cut you loose if I had my dagger, she said. I have one up in the cherry tree. It's sharp. If you'll wait till I fetch it. No, said the hummingbird. Listen to me. There may not be time to save me. The spider will poison me soon. But if you would go to my nest and warm the eggs. Flory caught her breath. <gasps> I could do that. The bird's given her a key to change her anger into purpose. If you tell me where the nest is, I'll go and warm the eggs and they won't die. And then I'll come back with my dagger and save you. Will you? Something gleamed in the hummingbird's eye. Her throat moved in and out. Will you save my nestlings? I will, Flory promised. Tell me where your nest is. The hummingbird twisted her head, staring hard into Flory's face. It's all right, Flory told her. I don't eat eggs. Oof. I built my nest between the fence post and the wall, whispered the hummingbird. The fence post close to the fish pond is hidden by the barberry bush. You'll have to climb the barberry bush to get to it.
Mm. If you know what barberry bushes are like, they call them tick nurseries because they're covered in thorns. And when the deer walk past them, they, the thorns comb the deer and the ticks drop and grow up and then sit in the thorn bushes. And when the deer walk by, they get back on the deer. It's not going to be a good place for the fairies, but it's a really good place for the nest. I can do that, she said though she knew how prickly barberry bushes were and she feared the climb. Don't worry, I'll find the nest and warm the eggs and then I'll come back. She yanked her arm away from the spider web. The sticky thread left a red welt on her arm. Flory was not going to fuss over the, a minor wound like that. She set her teeth, turned her back on the hummingbird and set forth on her quest. When you set your teeth, you're doing this. I'm going to do it. And the chapter ends and set forth on her quest. And the next chapter is called Chapter 7, The Praying Mantis. <gasps> you know, this, this story right now with the hummingbird, it's towards the end, like the, it's in the summer. It's not in the spring when the praying mantis are small. The praying mantis is going to be big. Mm. Chapter 7, tomorrow.